We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. We had an expansive run in the 60s and the 70s. You might have thought, as I did then, that our species would be on Mars before the century was over. But instead, we've pulled inward. Robots aside, we've backed off from the planets and the stars. I keep asking myself, is it a failure of nerve or a sign of maturity? Maybe it's the most we could reasonably have expected. In a way, it's, it's amazing that it was possible at all. We sent a dozen humans on week-long excursions to the moon, missions that returned a wealth of data, but nothing of short-term, everyday, bread-on-the-table practical value, or at least not much. They lifted the human spirit, though. They enlightened us about our place in the universe. A highly visible program affecting our view of ourselves might clarify the fragility of our planetary environment and the common peril and responsibility of all the nations and peoples of Earth. There's something more. Spaceflight speaks to something deep inside us. Many of us, if not all. A scientific colleague tells me about a recent trip to the New Guinea highlands where she visited a Stone Age culture hardly contacted by Western civilization. They were ignorant of uh, wristwatches, soft drinks, frozen food. But they knew about Apollo 11. They knew that humans had walked on the moon. They knew the names of Armstrong and Aldrin and the Collins. They wanted to know who was visiting the moon these days. Projects that are future-oriented, that, despite their political difficulties, can be completed only in some distant decade, are continuing reminders that there will be a future. Winning a foothold on other worlds whispers in our ears that we're more than Picts, or Serbs, or Tongans. We're humans. In the meantime, People everywhere hunger to understand. The idea that we've now understood something never grasped by anybody who ever lived before. That exhilaration, especially intense for the scientists involved, but perceptible to nearly everybody, propagates through the society, bounces off walls, and comes back at us. It encourages us to address problems in other fields that have also never been solved. It increases the general sense of optimism in the society. It gives currency to critical thinking of the sort urgently needed if we're going to solve hitherto intractable social issues. It helps stimulate a new generation of scientists. The more science in the media, especially if methods are described as well as conclusions and implications, the healthier, I believe, the society is. There's plenty of housework to be done down here on Earth. And our commitment to it must be steadfast. But we're the kind of species that needs a frontier for fundamental biological reasons. Every time humanity stretches itself, it receives a jolt of productive vitality that can carry it for centuries. Yuri Romanenko on returning to Earth after what was then the longest space flight in history said, two, quote, one, the cosmos is a magnet. Once you've been there, all you can think of is how to get back. It's on the parachute. So if it lands, 
Yeah, yeah. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Ignition. So maximum height. 3,842 feet. Maximum speed, 544. Mach, half. Okay. So what was your altitude? 3,842, so we're only... 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, ignition! Yeah! Let's go! Oh. Wow. Okay guys, everybody heads up, it's a little bit dark out.